First of all, the, uh, the full title of this talk is Ido States and Sleeping Beauty. Um, I should acknowledge my collaborators, Ben Schumacher, and our six undergraduate students at Kenyon College and Denison University. Uh, the notion of an Ido state is one that we uh, hope is useful in analyzing uh, the action of an agent who's able to condition uh, future action on information that the agent has about itself and the environment. And this notion of context is our attempt to um, adapt epistemic logic, a, a type of modal logic, to these types of questions. And of course, we, we start simply. We have a world that consists of just the agent and the environment. Uh, the agent state includes all the information, information available to the uh, agent at a given time, um, at least classically. Uh, but not all states in the uh, Cartesian product of possible agent states and possible environment states are possible, so we restrict to something that we call a context. And so the, the context is the, the subset of possible agent and environment states that, that are consistent with the agent state. And for our analysis of, of the Sleeping Beauty problem, um, we, we took the view that, that the context is, is time independent. Part of, the re, part of that is reflected in the fact that uh, the agent state includes time information. So the Ido state itself, as I said, was the, uh, the, the, the actual states that are consistent with the agent state. And uh, we can always imagine that the, the probability that the agent assigns to the state of the environment, given its state, uh, is given by some rule. We might imagine that this is, this is assigned by some uh, joint distribution, but again, at least classically, the agent itself is never going to assign an a priori uh, probability of PA. It knows, the agent knows, that it's in the state A. It always conditions on that knowledge. So here's the Sleeping Beauty problem. On Sunday, Sleeping Beauty uh, goes to sleep. A fair coin is flipped. If it lands heads, she's awakened twice. If it lands tails, she's awakened only once on Wednesday. The experiment concludes on Wednesday. Uh, it's, and each time she's awakened, she's interviewed. And she's asked, what is your what's the probability that the coin flip was heads? Uh, perhaps a better way of asking that is, what is your credence? What credence do you give to uh, the, the coin flip uh, landing heads? And <clears throat> there are two views to, to uh, possible answers. One's called the Haffer view, uh, based on the fair coin. But if you look at it from the, the, the standpoint that uh, Sleeping Beauty is awakened twice if it lands on heads, then betting odds give you a probability of two-thirds. So we wanted to use this notion of Ido state in context uh, to analyze this uh, problem in a slightly different way. So <clears throat> here's Sleeping Beauty's world. Uh, here are her four possible states, beginning, sleeping, awake, and conclusion of the uh, experiment. And so here's how the time evolution runs. And I'm afraid maybe your eyes are playing tricks. That thing that appears to be an R is actually a B. Um, I don't know how that happened, but there it is. Um, okay. uh, so physics can provide us with a distribution over the initial conditions, plus a time evolution rule, and this gives us uh, conditional probabilities, but this isn't enough to give a joint distribution. If we add to it the, the context invariance under the time evolution, we're able to say that all these possibilities have equal probability, and from that, we're able to derive the two-thirds. And let me quickly add, the Ido state uh, view was used by Schumacher previously in deducing the erasure form of Landauer's principle that Charles Bennett mentioned earlier. With that, I'll end.